So today we're gonna to be building my first ever real split keyboard. And the reason I say real split keyboard is because I've done lots of mono block splits. And I also even did an actual split about a year ago called the Scotto split that used a VGA cable. But the thing with that one is that it used one controller and then passed a matrix from the right half to the left over that VGA cable. Today we're gonna to be building a split board with two separate RP2040 controllers and then using a TRS cable to connect the two halves. So this here is the Scotto hazard. I'm calling it that because of this like little caution tape design right here. It's a simple four by five layout on both halves here. Now this does also come in a four by six layout if you wanted to build that. And if you're not aware, all my hand wired boards are available for free. I'll link them in the description if you want to download them. But this is the build we're going to be doing today is a simple four by five layout on both halves. And I do have to mention that this was printed on my Bamboo A1. So it printed really, really nice. It's one of my newer printers. We have the multi-material up top here. This was printed without any support there, which was nice to see it could handle that. Um, it is a little jagged because that's kind of what happens when you don't use support, but it printed really nicely. We'll put our TRS connector in there. That will, of course, be our USB-C port for our controller that will mount in the bottom. And then that's just mirrored on the left half here. So they're basically just a mirror of each other. The first thing, of course, with this build, like any other builds, we have to pick our switches out. And for this one, I'm going to be going with these Echo Penguin Silence. I've never used a silent switch, so I thought it'd be a kind of nice change to use that on this. These are a tactile silent, so I'm going to go ahead and pop those into the board right now. There are the switches in the board, and these are actually five pin switches, so they're a lot easier to wire up with a hand wired board. I'm not going to go in detail on how that's done because I have more dedicated videos on my channel if you want to see that, but this is just a very simple four row and five column matrix, so it's super simple because it's ortholinear. I'm going to go through and just wire that all up. So there are both halves with all the columns all wired up. And the one thing I wanted to quickly note out here is that you can see that this plate is warping a little bit. I'm asked this quite often if that's a problem. Well, with these plates, it really isn't an issue because they can bend right back like that. But also when you take your case and you pop this in, you'll see that it is warping a little bit right there. But when you mount down the screw holes, it'll be perfectly fine. That's just pretty standard with these 3D printed plates. But the next step, of course, is to take all our rows and do the diodes. I have a baggie of pre-coiled diodes here that I use my diode coiling tool on. So I'm gonna go through and use my heat shrink method and do all that. Then after I'm done with that, we'll be back to talk about the TR rs cable because that's where this build kind of starts to get a little special so i'm gonna go through do the dials So here are both halves of the matrix all wired up. You can see that we have all our rows with the diodes going here, and then we have our columns running vertically. So everything is wired up on this half. This half is also all wired up. And now the next step for this build is to get the TRS cable set up first, because that's basically just gonna mount into the case. So we have our little connector here. We have the case that will kind of mount in there with this little nut on it. And the way this works is that we have four pins here. And if you're not aware what a TRS cable is, this is a TRS cable. It's basically a 3.5 millimeter plug with four little poles here. So we have the tip, ring, ring, and sleeve. And each one of those corresponds to a pin on this little connector here. So what I'm gonna do with that is I'm gonna mount it into the case. I'm gonna get wires pre-run from it now. And then when we get to the controller section, I kind of explain a little bit more how this will work with this cable to connect the two halves. So I'm just gonna go through and get this pre-mounted and then we'll talk after. So the TRS connectors are now soldered to the board. You can see we have the port up top here and then we have three cables coming off of them there. Basically we have the white one for data, we have the black one for ground, and then the red one is for voltage. And how that will work is basically just kind of connect them into here. So we have our five volt and our ground, that's where the red and black will connect. And then I forget exactly which pin it is, but there's one of these pins that I'll connect the white one to. It's in my firmware file, I'll have to take a look. But that's how we'll get data transmitted across the halves over that TRS cable. So what I'm gonna do now actually is I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna grab my matrix boards for each half also. I'm gonna wire everything to the controllers and I'll be back after that's done. So you can see now that everything's wired to the controller. And I do want to mention that on the left half here, because this is the five column layout and it does also come in a six column layout. The way I'm doing this is that you can see we start on the very bottom pin here and then kind of go up. So we go one, two, three, four, five from the bottom. And then the right half here, what we're doing is actually skipping that very bottom pin and then going down from the top there. The reason for that is that we have to skip the outer column. So on that one, that's the top pin over here. And on this half, it's the bottom pin. So we're skipping that outer column so that we can do the five column layout here without having to have like separate layouts inside of QMK. Now I did also test the firm on this it is working it was a little bit more challenging than i thought with that what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take both halves here i'm going to grab some uv resin and uv resin these controllers in i'm going to assemble the board together and then we'll talk about the keycaps So 
So this is the fully assembled board without any keycaps on it. You can see we have all our nice Echo Penguin switches in the right half here, which I'm getting really excited to use because they feel really nice to type on, but they're super quiet. Like, I don't know if you can hear that or not, but that looks pretty good here. They both look really nice. Now, the next thing I have to do, of course, is put some keycaps on. We're going to be using these keycaps that I printed, of course. These are my Scotto Cap Scoop, which are available on the repo if you want to download and print them yourself. But you can see here that we went with some Bamboo Nebula filament, which looks really nice with the, like, glitter in it. Then we have the matte yellow bamboo filament on the middle there for the legend. It looks really, really nice. And one really cool thing with these is that these are printed on my A1, which actually prints really nice for keycaps, even more so than my P1S combo because it has flow dynamics calibration. So you can see there, if you actually look at the surface finish, it looks really, really nice because it's before each print, it actually calibrates to make sure the filament flows properly. So these just look really, really nice. And I'm really excited to put them on the board. So I'm going to go through, pop those on now. There is the fully assembled board. Let's just take a look at the right half here. I think the keycaps look really nice with that. I almost wish that I did the black here with that nebula too, but I think it looks cool with the black and yellow here. Everything looks nice on it. I have the really nice bottom. Really happy with how it came out. And the final thing to tie it all together is I'm using this like hot pink TRS cable. I want to eventually make like a coiled one for it, but for now, this one actually works just fine. So we kind of connect two halves like that. And then what we have is a split keyboard that works like that. So what I'm going to do now, of course, is a typing test. Just typing on these right here. They're really, really quiet. You hear more of the desk noise than anything, but they feel really nice. They kind of feel like the Echo Lavender Purples I've liked a lot. But what I'm going to do is just go type on it, and then we'll have some closing words, and that's the entire build. So I think that sounds and feels pretty decent to type on. I think it looks really good. I like the hot pink kind of contrast to the yellow and black here. And I really like that filament there. It looks really nice with the like Galaxy Nebula filament. Just a really cool looking board. I really like how it came out. What I would like to eventually do is kind of something like this, where if I unplug this, what I could do is actually change the firmware so that the halves work like that instead, which might look a little bit cooler. I don't know, maybe I'll mess around with that, but I don't really have much else to say here other than like, comment, subscribe as usual. It does help me boost in the algorithm. And with that, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.